adrenergic neurons release norepinephrine as the primary neurotransmitter, it is also known as noradrenaline. These neurons are found in the central nervous system and also in the sympathetic nervous system, where they serve as links between ganglia and the effector organs. Epinephrine or also known as adrenaline is the main neurotransmitter excreted from the adrenal medulla. And dopamine, which has an important role as a neurotransmitter in the CNS. So it'll be discussed in the CNS lectures. Now let's discuss the neurotransmission of the adrenergic neurons, or as I'm calling, the adrenaline's journey. This journey involves synthesis of dopamine, followed by noradrenaline then adrenaline, then storage, release and binding to receptors, followed by removal of the neurotransmitter from the synaptic cleft. Tyrosine is transported by a carrier into the adrenergic neuron, where it is hydroxylated by tyrosine hydroxylase 2-dehydroxyphenylalanine, or known as DOPA. And this is the rate-limiting step in the formation of norepinephrine. DOPA is then decarboxylated by L-amino acid decarboxylase, to form dopamine in the presynaptic neuron. Then dopamine is transported into synaptic vesicles by an amine transporter system. This carrier system is blocked by reserpine, which we'll discuss later. Dopamine is next hydroxylated to form norepinephrine by the enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylase. As we discussed before in synaptic transmission video, when an action potential arrived to the nerve ending, voltage sensitive calcium channels on the presynaptic membrane open, causing an increase in the concentration of intracellular calcium. Elevated calcium levels promote the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the cell membrane and the release of their contents into the synaptic space. Drugs such as guanathidine block this release. Then noradrenaline diffuses across the synaptic space and binds to postsynaptic receptors on the effector organ, or to presynaptic receptors on the nerve ending. Binding to a receptor leads to a biologic response within the cell. Then comes the last step which is the removal of noradrenaline, and actually there are multiple options for this process to be done. Noradrenaline may diffuse out of the synaptic cleft and enter the systemic circulation. Or it may be metabolized to inactive metabolites, that will be excreted in urine, by catecholomethyltransferase, known as COMT, in the synaptic space. Or it may undergo reuptake into the neuron. The reuptake by the neuronal membrane involves a sodium chloride-dependent norepinephrine transporter, that can be inhibited by tricyclic antidepressants, such as imipramin, by serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors such as geoxetine, or by cocaine, which we'll discuss later. Reuptake of norepinephrine into the presynaptic neuron is the primary mechanism for termination of its effects. Once norepinephrine re-enters the adrenergic neuron, it may be taken up into synaptic vesicles via the amine transporter system, so it'll be ready for release by another action potential. Or it can be oxidized by monoamine oxidase, known as MAL, present in neuronal mitochondria, producing inactive metabolites that are excreted in urine. Noradrenaline undergoes methylation in the adrenal medulla producing adrenaline. This is the adrenaline's journey. I hope that was useful and entertaining for you. Please help me to know if that lecture was useful for you, using like or a comment. Subscribe and wait for the next lectures.